Uh, another uh, sort of regional Fed pre uh, sort of governor speaking yesterday, also historically hawkish, sounding dovish, saying that, well, you know, rate increases take time to flow through. So it was neither here nor there, I mean, cumulatively speaking, between uh, both those uh, statements that we got. Well, Ed Yardini is president at Yardini Research. He's uh, joining us right now to take some questions. Ed, great to have you with us here on the program, as always. Thanks very much. Yes. So uh, after this big move we've seen in global equities, how are things looking to you? Well, I think uh, the, the markets have had uh, a very good run here. But in the U.S., we've seen the market going up by 16, 17 percent since it uh, bottomed on June 16th. I think it needs a rest here. I think that uh, we're getting close to September. September is a month that tends to be one of the tends to be the weakest month of, of the year when you look at it back to 1928. And then, of course, we got the Fed uh, likely to hike the Fed funds rate by, I think, 75 basis points. And then quantitative tightening, which uh, has been implemented, is going to be implemented on a, uh, on a bigger basis uh, in September and onwards. Hmm. Uh, Ed, hi. Good morning. So what does one do in a market like this, where there is perhaps an impending recession coming through? Um, you know, the, the the economy is doing fine so far, but one doesn't know yeah. how long that could last, right? At a time like this, most markets are still sitting on bull markets. I mean, the S&P 500 has put five weeks of gains behind it. Do you continue yes. to ride this rally, expecting the market to climb every wall of worry, or do you take some profits off the table now? Well, I think for, tra for traders, uh, now is probably a good time to uh, take some profits. Uh, I would say for investors, hold off. Uh, if you've got some cash, wait. There'll probably be another opportunity to buy at uh, uh, lower, lower uh, levels for the market. I do think that June 16th made an important low uh, for the bear market. So I think we're in a bull market, but that doesn't mean that the market has to go straight up. I mean, the reality is it's hard to get wildly bullish here when you got valuation multiples uh, really quite elevated. Typically, at the end of a bear market, the opportunities are that you can buy stocks at six, seven, eight, maybe nine times forward earnings. And now we're looking at 15 to 18 forward earnings. So they're not giving stocks away here. I would say long-term investing is probably the smartest thing you can do here. But for traders, take some profits. Uh, for investors with cash, wait for an opportunity. Ed, good morning. Uh, you know, this is the question I asked you last time as well, uh, you know, that we saw peak fear in, in May, June, uh, and uh, you know whether we are approaching peak greed, you said it's maybe still some time away. But uh, given the recent movement, uh, especially in some of the markets like India, do you think we are reaching there now? Well, I, I think when you look around the world, there are really global investors are finding fewer places that are safe havens. Uh, so Europe's uh, economy has done actually very well in the first half of the year because of the uh, reopening trade there. So the U.S. economy, as you know, uh, showed slightly negative growth in the first half, and Europe outperformed. But everybody knows that Europe's may be facing a very serious energy crisis going into the into the winter months. So I don't think Europe is a very uh, good place to invest for, for now. Uh, China, I think um, their economy is depressed. I think they've got a property bubble that's uh, very reminiscent of what happened in the U.S. in 2008. So I, I would be uh, hesitant to move into China. Uh, I think India does stand out. I think that's one, one of the reasons the market's done well, is uh, India does stand out as a safe haven for those who want to invest in emerging uh, markets. Uh, you know, there's certainly been a lot of volatility in uh, other emerging markets and their, and their stock markets. I mean, uh, absolutely. That fact, of course, uh, has also been it, it, it shows up well in prices as well, right? I mean, in terms of large, uh, major markets, uh, yes. in terms of performance for the year, uh, we are right on top. I mean, in the Indian market, the Nifty, for example, the benchmark uh, is uh, number one. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so uh, you know, there is there are some who are starting to talk about different styles now. I mean, if this is, as you said, we are in a bull market, but there could be pullbacks. Yeah. But if, uh, if, if you are in a bull market, then it... it Again, once again, starts to look at growth over value, that kind of thing. Uh, what what yeah. will be what will be the dominant styles? Yeah, uh, I, I guess uh, I'm going to kind of do a barbell. I'm going to uh, say uh, all of the above. Uh, I think you need some value, and I think you need some growth. Uh, so I've been uh, continuing to recommend technology and uh, financials. Uh, 
technology is certainly growth. Some financials are growth, but some more value. And then energy. I think energy is still going to work well. It's It was a tremendous outperformer in the first half of the year. It's been underperforming in recent weeks, but uh, the price of oil is still uh, uh, very elevated. And uh, many of the fossil fuel companies have cut back on their capital spending, and they're generating a tremendous amount of cash and using that for buybacks and uh, issuing more dividends. So that's the way I would look at this market. Okay. Is there any major risk to this rally now, both for global as well as local markets? Well, I think it's the same risk that uh, the markets discounted in the first half of the year. In the first half of the year, the, the recognition was that uh, inflation was much more persistent than had been thought back in 2021. And uh, we also had a perception that uh, we're falling into a recession. And so the market really had a, a very significant sell-off. Uh, here in the U.S., we had a 23% drop in the S&P 500. And then all of a sudden, we hit a low there on June 16th because I think the market came around to perceive that we were getting close to peak inflation and that the economy was still basically growing slowly, but growing nonetheless. And wouldn't you know, it just as earnings, uh, as analysts started to cut the earnings, investors decided that maybe they'd been too pessimistic. I, I think looking at the second half of the year, the big risk is that inflation turns out to be um, a, an ongoing persistent problem, uh, that the Federal Reserve, uh, which is uh, by some investors expected to lower interest rates next year, that that's wishful thinking. Uh, so I think it all really revolves around the inflation situation. I do think there's uh, evidence of inflation uh, peaking, but uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to go back to 2%. And peaking, if we go from you know, 5 6 7% down to 4 to 5%, that's still an unacceptably high inflation rate as far as the Fed is concerned, and they would still be raising interest rates. So, so those are, uh, it's the same old things to worry about. And it's conceivable that the market will do it again, though. Again, I think investors came to the conclude they were too pessimistic.